both sides of them are damaged to the point you can't live in them. Uh, but it, that's, they, all the neighbors there think the tornadoes were coming from two different directions and formed right there and then went north because there's a ridge just to the south of their house. That ridge is wiped out on kind of both ends. It's wider there because it looks like it came both ends of that ridge. And it's right on the Saline Pulaski County line. I mean, west of there, Saline County, there's no damage in Saline County. Right. South of there, there's no damage. Mm -hmm. It's like it started right there and went due north. And you can see where it crosses Canis, and you can see where it crosses Highway 10, and then it crosses Lake Maumau, and then it crosses the river and goes through Plantation and Mudflyer, and then it crosses the interstate and just, you know, and then it crosses Lake Conway. It crossed three major bodies of water. Mm -hmm. That didn't do anything at all. To what are they going? Uh, yeah, sorry, what are they? What are they going to do with all the debris? I mean, we don't have a landfill to take all burn. Well, well the, the construction debris is not allowed to be burned because a lot of it has treated lumber in it, things like that. <coughs> so it has to be landfill. Wow. Uh, so I mean, they they will have to do something or grind it or do something. But uh, the problem where they where they're at on Deer Drive, it's a private road and it's over a mile long. You have to haul everything to the county road where they've got dumpsters set up at. They had two dumpsters Saturday. When I left out there at 2 o'clock, they were both full. I mean, there wasn't any more room in those two dumpsters, so I guess they bring two out every day. I don't know. But uh, the, the vegetative debris you can burn, but yeah. they don't want you burning the construction debris because of all the toxic fumes that we put off. Yeah. 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 All right, call the May 12th uh, civil service meeting to order. Uh, uh, before I go to the public comment, uh, first item on the agenda, I, I want to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to um, welcome our newest commissioner, uh, Commissioner Scott. <laughs> uh, welcome you. Uh, I'm sure you uh, will enjoy <laughs> our evening get togethers. And uh, so uh, we welcome you and uh, we'll try to, as we go along, kind of fill you in as we talk about things so you'll know kind of the, back the back, background and so forth. So, so welcome on board. She's probably already read it twice. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And we do, third meeting, we do require you to be able to recite the manual in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you need to work for it on that. Uh, next thing I'd like to do, again, before we do public comment, uh, I just want to, uh, we do have uh, Commissioner Ortega here with us tonight. And I uh, would like to read a, uh, a little letter to him, if I could. Uh, uh, Mike, the uh, commissioners have drafted this letter for you. So why don't you come up to the podium mm -hmm. just a second there. Uh, it says, Dear Mike, your fellow Maumelle Civil Service Commissioners would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your service to this commission. You have served with true dedication and devotion. Your spirit of community service, responsibility, and pride demonstrate an ideal that we should all strive to attain. You will be missed on the commission, but we know your dedication to the welfare of our community remains intact. We have been honored to serve with you, but just as importantly, we have been honored by your friendship. Our best wishes go with you as you leave the commission. Again, we honor and thank you for your service. All right, sir. <laughs> that's our whole budget right there. <laughs> All right. I'd just like to say one sure, thing. Thank you. Thank you for this. And it's been my pleasure to work with each and every one of you guys. And I uh, wish it could have been longer. Yeah. But, you know, it is what it is. Right. And uh, if I can be of any assistance to you guys in anything else, give me a call. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, next thing on the agenda is just opening the floor to public comment. Again, these are items not uh, related directly related to an agenda item. Uh, don't have any forms turned in, but I'll open the floor to anyone like to speak on any item not on the agenda. All right, none forthcoming. Uh, next order of business tonight, it is that time of year where we elect uh, commission officers. Uh, so we will open the floor. Uh, we will do a chairman's uh, position first. Uh, open the floor for nominations on the chairman's position, and then we'll move to secretary. 
I will make a motion that we reinstate you, John Chapman, as chairman of the commission. Second. We have a motion and a second that the uh, current chairman be reappointed for another term as chairman. Discussion on that motion? Any other nominations? <coughs> uh, all in favor of the reappointment of the current chair say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. All right. Uh, again, say the same thing. Just uh, thank you, and uh, we'll do. Uh, we'll continue to try to do the best we can can do. Uh, open the floor next for appointment of the secretary position for this year. Uh, open the floor for nominations for secretary. I will make a motion that Billy Harrington be reappointed as secretary of the commission. I second. I have a motion and a second that uh, Secretary Harrington reappointed, be reappointed to another term as secretary. Do uh, have any other nominations? Any discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Congratulations, Secretary Harrington. I'm not sure that's the right word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, uh, we will go forward. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, uh, next order of business is approval of the April minutes. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Scott, just so you know, we uh, the secretary sends these out uh, normally within a week after the meeting by email for you to uh, review. Uh, then, of course, we bring them here uh, for formal review and a uh, vote and approval. So that does normally go out by <coughs> email within a week after our meeting. So entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes as written. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. I have a discussion. The motion. Uh, all those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. Minutes are approved as all right, uh, moving down into the old business section, and I'm going to <coughs> branch out. I, I uh, Actually, the bullet we put there is probably not all encompassing of kind of what we're going to touch on uh, here in this second part of this discussion, but the uh, first part uh, that we had there, you remember last meeting we talked about uh, Director James was researching uh, <coughs> the possibility of... Uh, some customized test, written test through an accredited testing agency uh, as opposed to the uh, written test that we are currently using. And I don't know whether you have an update. Do you have an update you can share with us at this time? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I've sent out requests to various agencies that do these types of tests. I've gotten three responses. Uh, and based on what the are, we will be able to do one, uh, probably the police department this year, the captain and the, what, the lieutenant and sergeant for the police department. We're working with FPSI on that. The reason we're using the uh, police department, we ask for SOPs from the departments and the police departments, the SOPs came in first, and we're working with that agent of uh, FPSI to get a standardized test for the police department, excuse me, a customized test for the police department. Our current budget will sustain that. We have enough in this year's uh, Civil Service Commission budget to do that this year for that one department. Next year we should be able to do the fire department. So that's where we are on that and I'll be working with uh, the chief and whoever he wants to uh, work <coughs> with us on that to get the various state statutes and things that we want to reference. And when would we be, uh, is this a, a definite that we're ready to say that, or is this still, still a little bit in the tentative stage? Right, it's still in the tentative stage until we get the information, we get some concrete dollar amounts that we can go back to the budget with and make sure that we, we, we can sustain it. But it looks very good right now. And I believe that, and I just kind of might have had, I believe the, the commission, 
again, you don't know if he brings back a formal thing, but I believe we kind of support, we are in support of doing this process. So do you think next month we'd be able to maybe finalize? We should be able to. We have, we'll Just because we're, we're getting into mid-year. Yeah, we'll have to at uh, next month's uh, meeting. Right. We'll have to do something one way or the other. Okay. All right. And we might point out to Commissioner Scott, this is a, this is an attempt to put a more local flavor into these tests rather than some standardized test that may have questions that really don't apply. So this is putting state statute and mom mail statutes sprinkled through this test in a probably a better way than what's been done before. That's what they're looking at doing. So how does the process work? Are these tests that have already been developed by someone and, yeah. and or are they a, we, a marriage of... We, Okay. We use an accredited test. First of all, we start with the accredited testing firm. We do not develop tests locally. A uh, couple of reasons for that. Number one, we just get into the fairness issues of confidentiality and just making sure that nothing is slanted. So we do, in legal issues, we do use an accredited testing firm. In the past, and this is just the written portion of the testing we are talking about. In the past, we've used a simply can test that was pretty generic and used across the nation. And both departments have pointed out that, uh, okay, that may be okay, but they would like to have something with a little more, again, state law and city ordinance. So Director James is researching. It will still be a test done by a nationally accredited organization. It will not be a locally developed test, but it will incorporate state law and, and department procedures and uh, city ordinances and so forth. So uh, it keeps the fairness issue from our standpoint uh, where we're kind of hands off and it's a fair issue because it's done by an accredited agency, but it does incorporate local information into it. So 60% uh, of the test or more will be based on state statutes and FOPs for the organization. The other 30 to 40% will be generic type tests. That, that the company has in place already. And uh, so, uh, and, and that is on the promotional written test. The new higher written test pretty much stays as it is. It is a pretty much, because obviously they don't have the experience to know city ordinances and so forth, that's why they're trained. So we'll continue to use a generic type national test for in hires but a more customized test for promotion so uh, again just we'd love to see that if we could next month just because we're into the mid-year time frame and, yeah. all right anything else on that no, sir. all right uh, the next discussion like I said I won't branch out a little bit and, and there's probably a, a point in there that uh, I didn't think at the time to include in the agenda but we're, we're going to go ahead and proceed with with discussing this all as a package. A uh, discussion of, of various uh, qualifications in the test scoring, and I'm just going to go back partly for the new commissioner and partly just for all of us, kind of go back and recap. Uh, this discussion started several meetings ago. Uh, commissioner Ortega brought up the discussion of uh, the feasibility of including seniority in our grading process. Uh, in the, obviously, the promotional test. Uh, the commission is pretty much, uh, or has made the decision not to proceed with uh, any seniority basis uh, points in, the, in the, the scoring. At that time, uh, I actually did bring up, though, the possibility of using seniority as a tiebreaker in the event of a tie as a tiebreaker. The commission voted last month uh, not to do that. So at this point, pending anyone bringing this back before us in the future, at this point the seniority uh, discussion is, 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 is dead at this point. Again, anybody can bring that at any, back up at any time. Uh, in that first discussion of seniority, then Director James also did just mention uh, briefly, uh, you know, that some departments do, uh, or some cities do veterans preference and so forth and we discussed that a little last meeting we uh, agreed to table that indefinitely 
pending the city coming back and deciding whether they wanted us to pursue that or not. I think it was the general feeling of the group that the city, it's almost a policy of the city, and then we would either endorse it or not endorse it. At this time, the city has decided to keep that deferred indefinitely and not proceed with any veteran status uh, discussions at this time. Is that, that correct? That's correct. All right. So again, uh, if the city makes any decision on that at a different time, they can bring that back to us. Kind of the third factor that came up in the discussion at last month's meeting, uh, it came up as we were discussing the seniority issue, also the ed any education uh, preference or education points uh, in the new hire process. And uh, last month we uh, basically said we were going to, to uh, defer that and just give some people time to think on that. I'll open up the floor for discussion. Again, we've not done anything in any way with education points. So I'll just open the floor for the chiefs, for the commissioners, for anybody that wants to make any discussion on that and then uh, uh, kind of wrap up or try to bring that discussion back to the center. So I'll open the floor at this time on anybody would like to discuss education and points. Secretary Harrington. My thought on education is qualifications. If, if they don't manifest themselves in a test score, I'm not really all that interested in them because I've known too many people that were not highly educated, that were highly intelligent and even wise people, and I've known my share of educated idiots. So to me, if it doesn't show up in a test score, manifest itself in some sort of way, I don't see why we should use it. Other discussion? Either the chief or the chief. I'm Sam Williams, police chief. I, uh, once again, polled uh, the people in, within the police department. And I just did send them a question and asked them to give it their uh, all the supervisors and those that are interested. And asked them to give it their, their the people that work on their squads, their units, and, and their divisions, and give me feedback if they had it. And once again, I found that, uh, that frankly, we don't have a consensus on this. Um, what I heard a lot was uh, a lot like what Mr. Harrington was saying, that uh, a college degree doesn't necessarily make anybody a better supervisor candidate. Uh, I heard several people say that uh, it, it would depend on what the degree was in and what their field of study was. I heard several people say, well, it might be worth something, but it's not worth a lot. And I heard some people say that the uh, a fair testing system where everybody takes the same test, goes through the same interview, uh, goes through the same promotion potential for C is uh, what they prefer. So, well, uh, I would tell you that the majority of people feel like, they, again, a fair system for everybody rated uh, using the same uh, rating system, same test scores, same grades uh, for everyone seemed to be the majority. Yeah, but it definitely was the majority. Like I said, we had several people that had, had different views. There was no clear, well, yeah, I think this is a great idea and it doesn't matter what the degree is in. That's just not what, what we saw, frankly. And once again, I tried real hard not to uh, to sway anybody in one way or the other simply because as I told them the, the uh, first thing, I was probably taking my last promotion potential. <laughs> uh, so, uh, that, that's kind of where we are as a department. Chief, do any jobs in the police department require a college degree? No, sir. We are the exact same way on our transfer policies and, and where you go in divisions. That is made with a, with a lot of division commander input. But uh, we will ask them to, in certain situations, uh, write papers explaining why they, they want the position and what they think they bring to the table and what's that. But uh, there is no uh, criteria or education points or policy related points or anything like that for uh, transfer criteria. Anybody else want to? Speak on this topic. John Payne here, I'm the fire chief. Um, realistically, we're the we're almost in exactly the same um, consensus as the police department. Uh, we looked at it. I've talked to individuals. Uh, we've uh, had a report back uh, from the 
professional firefighters and basically uh, Commissioner Harrington uh, stated that they felt that the education should manifest itself uh, into the contested procedures itself and uh, again we ran, he ran into the, run into the situation where if a person may have a, a degree in something that is uh, say someone has an associate and someone has a degree and they get preference points for that degree and it has absolutely nothing to do with the field time looking at that, and, uh, and I'll say on my own part, I had a hard time looking at it and thinking that uh, someone who has, just because they have a degree in a subject that is totally not relevant, uh, really shouldn't give them preference. Their education should put them where they should be in the right way. So, uh, anyway. Chief, let me ask you the same question I asked Chief Williams. Is there any job in the fire department that requires a college degree? As of right now, no. The new job description for the uh, chief has some, uh, it's probably be better for the mayor to ask him than me <laughs> in this situation. But uh, there again, uh, does take into consideration uh, years of experience, position, classes taken that may not be considered part of a formal education. Oh, I think in my mind, and I'll bring this again as much for the new commissioners for any other reason that we're going to get into letter from uh, Madam City Attorney. Uh, we have a rule, we work under a rule of three. So all we do as a commission is really develop and certify a list. Then if either chief has any position to hire for or to promote to, they are given the top three candidates from the list. We make no promotion decision whatsoever. We just furnish the three names. So, in reality, the chief can make any decision he wants to make within those three, so he is certainly free to take education. I mean, if he's got three candidates and one's got a uh, master's degree and the others don't, he, he's certainly free to take that into consideration within his rule of three. So, he can still weight anything he wants, seniority, uh, education, even veterans preference if he feels like like that qualifies them better for position so within that rule of three he can make any decision and take these things into factor so so uh, uh, that's kind of the way that uh, has done and do I uh, uh, any discussion from commissioners at this point I do not feel like we have any consensus of wanting to do anything here is that correct yeah. All right, let me move move on into the, the, the rule of three discussion, and I should have put this <coughs> on the agenda, probably a separate item, but I, I just failed to do so. We got into this discussion of the tiebreaker, and that is still probably my bigger concern of, of everything, is in the event we were to have a, a tie to break, we have no uh, way in our rules to do that. We asked the city attorney to research what I just talked about, the rule of three, and determine if we had tied, a, say we had five people that scored the exact same on the test. So you had five 90s on a, a new hire test. Would we give the chief all five of those names or were we restricted to three of those names? And I believe each of you got this email, so you've probably already read that. In her uh, uh, legal opinion is no, that we are restricted to the three names. So the question, uh, assuming that we uh, that we believe that's right, and I certainly think we, we all do, uh, then the question becomes, how will we deal with a tie if we have one? We still do not have a me mechanism to do that. It was brought up at the last meeting. Again, we've, we've already pretty much turned down seniority on the promotional <coughs> list. Obviously, you don't have any of those seniority issues with a new hire list, you really have nothing. So I believe Madam City Attorney may be the one that mentioned this. Uh, it would be, it would need legal uh, whatever to do a lot, basically to say that if you have a tie, that the that position will be determined by the luck of the draw. Uh, you know, my my position, is, and, and let me say, I think that you're dealing with really two, I want to make sure I think, I do think that this is two separate issues in terms of whether it's a preference, meaning sort of 
get the points on the front end to your score or a tiebreaker, whereas that will only come into play in the event of an exact numerical type, which as far as I know in 13 years has not happened. I, I, if, there, if it's happened, I've not been made aware of it. It came, so, with, it came within three tenths of a point. Okay, there. so, I, you know, I mean, I think that, okay. For uh, the promotional, we've not had a tie. Okay. In the entry level, yes, we have. Okay. Well, and, and that, I think that's really the more likely place to, right. for it to occur because in promotional scoring, you have uh, so many different factors that weigh yeah. differently that you're more likely to come out with uh, – different scores. In the new hire, you're dealing with a test score. And a lot more people. A lot more people. The, the chances are, you know, one in 100, you're going <laughs> to, you know, that they, they, they're going to get a particular score, and that's for everybody. So um, I think that uh, in terms of if there is a tie, regardless of what you choose to be that tiebreaker, I think, number one, you have to have a tiebreaker because otherwise if that if that tie falls within any of the – you know, in any three, you're gonna you're gonna have a problem. Uh, whether it's you know you're gonna bump someone out or whatever, but um, but I don't. I think as long as it's it's uh, can, noticed, people know on the front end what that tiebreaker will be, and um, that it's consistently handled that way. And by that I mean if it's luck of the draw, as silly as it may seem, I think there literally must be a draw which is witnessed. And and you know which we will have evidence of it occurring a particular way. I don't think it can just be, okay. Well, you know, we're gonna put this guy first and this guy. It literally needs to be done by draw, and those you know those people need to be notified. That's the way it'll be handled. So, um, this the statute does um, reference um, the ability to include other things besides luck of the draw, whether it's a practical examination, which I, you know the the fire the fire department having instituted that may reduce the likelihood of a tie in that situation. Um, length of service, which w we wouldn't be able to use, efficiency ratings, or ed educational or vocational qualifications. Those That could mean maybe mean practical experience from another department or a similar um, you know, type service, maybe in a volunteer capacity or something of that nature. And it, you, you may be talking about that that person will be given a point, you know, or, or be given, you know, a, a tenth of a point, something to make them slightly higher in that rating. So that's, if I'm happy to ask, answer whatever questions you might have. Uh, Learn it. Uh, uh, Secretary uh, Peterson. Oh, I guess on the entry level, which we've all agreed is the most likely place we're going to see a tie. And I don't know, Chief Williams can probably address this, and I'm sure Madam City Attorney too. Can certified police officers from Fordyce come in here and take the entry level test to come into Maumil? They can, and they do. Okay. I my personal opinion would be that should get some credit as far as a tiebreaker. If they are already a certified officer, it's going to save us money. We won't send them to school. Doesn't mean they're the best choice, but if it's a tiebreaker, and if they're a certified law enforcement officer, maybe that's a point one point, a half a point, uh, whatever weight it may be worth. And, and generally I would think, of course generally I think the Chiefs in their rule of three would take that certainly if he had a candidate that had one that was already certified and two that weren't. All other things being equal he would certainly probably select the one but uh, uh, Chief Williams did you have something you wanted to? Not on that. I, uh, I do have a question whenever it's an appropriate time. Okay, is it about this or is it, I mean, no, is about it? about the, the tiebreaker. You know, okay, go ahead, yeah. More of a tiebreaker sure. on the promotion. Yeah. I'm, I'm still a little, just a little confused, and, and maybe this is a, a question for our city attorney. <clears throat> if there is a tie for the number one position, are we allowed to have a one and a one A there without a tiebreaker? 
in, in that in that but if it's in the the first you know I mean I, I'm I'm not a mathematician so I'm sure there's other ways this could work out but what the the first position unless there's say five people tied for the with the same number one score then it's not going to be an issue as long as it's less than three tied for the first slot then we'll be okay but if it's four people then we have a problem because we can only provide three names my uh, and my reason for asking if I may give you my opinion. Um, I like to take the approach, uh, yeah, after the promotions have been done, and we've had our say, you know, I've had our say, and we've had a written test. If there is a clear one, two, and three, or if there is a one, two, and three, then absent some compelling reason to deviate from going straight down the list, I like, personally, mm -hmm. to, to go down the list. Understanding that there can be other factors and there can be things that we know and don't know that might influence that. And in keeping with that, if there is a tiebreaker of a uh, casting lots, I would hate to get a guy that was really tied with number one uh, and not know that and think that I am promoting number one when really I'm promoting one A. And in that particular uh, instance, my preference would be to know that I've got two people tied for number one and just make it tough. On, 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 let me just say something on the promotional test or promotional list. <coughs> Director James could actually carry that out however many decimal points he wanted to carry it out. So on the promotional test, really probably a tie is not, I mean, if he, right now he carries it out to the hundred, so he carries it out to 92.06. Well, if he needs to carry it out to 92.065, I mean, the odds are the promotional list is not going to be the problem where the tiebreaker comes in. Uh, I think that mathematically we can deal with that. It is on the in-hire list, again, where that is simply 100 questions, and you may have five people that get 90 out of 100 and get a 90. So I think, to me, the tiebreaker issue is kind of mathematically can be handled. Director James, you can speak on that, but I think that can be handled. It's the uh, new hire that I'm con more concerned with. I think uh, to address Chief Williams' concern, if we had four people that all made 90, and 90 was the highest score, that would be the only time that we would have to draw. If we had three people and all three of them made 90, you would still get okay. three nines. You would still get the three nines. Right. That would be the only time that we'd run into the problem is if we had four people then that's when we would have to cast lots, I guess. Yeah, and, and I do understand that we would get the three, but I would like, my preference would be for them to be ranked one, one A, one B. You know, that, that demonstrate we have a tie uh, for, for number one. And that was going to be my question from a practical standpoint, because I don't know the answer to this, but as the, as the list on a promotional list particularly, as it's transmitted, are, are the scores given, or is it just merely a name in the list? The scores, uh, uh, you're talking about transmitted to the Chiefs? The Chiefs, yes. Uh, I think it's just the name. Just the names. Just the name, and I don't believe we give the rank. I mean, I, I, I we don't... Do, we do, okay. Okay, okay, so it's just one, two, three, and, and right. the names. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with, in the event of a, of a tie, that that being made evident, that, that, that these three or, or these two were particularly tied or, or however it falls, my, my bigger concern is when we have in, have the fourth person right. who's tied in, you know, one of those spots. Um, that, that, that I think that could be easily handled because if we're given the ranking, uh, there is, uh, we had four people and three of them scored the same. They would all be ranked one. Exactly. They would all be ranked one. Exactly. And, and the only time that uh, uh, if we had to do a lot, then the four person would be one B. Right. Right. Let me let me go back to the promotional one first. Are, are we? Do you agree with what I've said? That mathematically, on the promotional list, we can handle it mathematically. I mean, we just carried out another decimal point. You may get a guy with a ninety-two point five six, and another guy with ninety-two point five. Six five or whatever, but and one of the things that I find comforting is that can be done to that degree, and obviously can for one and one and a tie of two people for one 
job of it being a four person job and not a uh, four person. Not yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the only the absolute worst case scenario from what I'm hearing from y'all would never occur is we've got a fourth person that's tied for a number one and I'm not even allowed to consider it. That'd be tough. Yeah. Right. But man, I, that, that well, sounds like that's right. going to happen long after I'm done. Right. Okay. All right. So, so from a motional standpoint, we're just going to leave as is. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Again, go back to the in hire deal. I believe the only way that I can see on that would be the lottery type deal because you really have no other basis on an in hire unless we totally establish something. Again, uh, uh, I'll ask opinions on that. I agree. Uh, we've sat here over the last two meetings and gone through three things that might have served as tiebreakers and found reasons not to use them right. all. It's kind of hard for me to go back now and say, oh, we can use it for in this situation. Right. I think the lottery is the best idea. Madam City Attorney, any? Uh, again, as long as it's the as notice is provided to the applicants and they understand that will be that will be how a tie is broken, then you know, I mean, I, I, they uh, I think that's that's the key. Director James, Mr. Chair, I think what we would have to do if we go with the lottery when we do the scores, and let's say we have five people that have eighty. Uh, at that point, we would do the lottery. We wouldn't wait until we get down to them. So when they call in, we would tell yeah, them what right. their rank is. And I think to make sure that that was public, we would put it in the advertisement. When we had, when we advertised the new uh, entry-level positions, we would put that process in there. Secondly, when we do that, when we do the lottery, a commissioner would have to be present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I would think that some we would, that's the only way you could certify right. the list. Right. Because we, at that point, we're taking four people and we're taking them and we're putting them six, seven, eight, and nine up for that. Right. Uh, Commissioner Peterson. Would this be something that Madam City Attorney could put together as far as what the lottery would consist of, how many people it consisted of, who would need to be present? Uh, well, I don't know. That, I mean, I, I, I'd be happy to do that. I'm not sure that that um, you know. I mean, I, I'm not sure I'm the sort of the best person to do that because I'm I'm pract not a practic. I don't have practical involvement in the the creation of the list currently, but I don't. I think as long as 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 um, Director James points out it, it, that it's um, advertised on the front end and that that any ties will be broken by a lottery drawing witnessed by. You know, performed by HR and witnessed by one commissioner, then that's fine. You know, what we what we typically do, for instance, when the the council appoints someone, you know, there are the ballots, they are signed, they are kept. And it's a public record. So, in as long as we had a system like that in place, which I can work with Director James to to you know make sure we comply, is uh, that there would be some way to say, okay. Um, we drew and and we've recorded the names and this the commit this is the commissioner who witnessed it and here I've signed it director James and I've signed it commissioner Peterson and this is the way it was done we have a public record they can come back and look at it. they know who was there that's so basically sufficient. that can come out of director James office. yes okay yeah and and we it doesn't have to be I don't think there's it's necessary to put that in the regs or do anything of that nature. I mean, because again, I don't think it's going to happen all that often. And um, as long as we're notifying the applicants uh, on the front end, then that that's going to be sufficient. Commissioner Durham, the Little Rock or North Little Rock Police and Fire have, have this problem. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We um, we quite honestly, we had never given it any. It's never been an issue of, of discussion. Uh, but when it came up with the seniority question then that's what led us into this discussion and it is true we have no no way if we if, if director james were to call us on the next test and say i got six people that scored 90 we would be having to hustle to try to figure out legally how we do that because we have nothing in our rules that gives us a way of doing that so uh, uh chief williams i i can't speak for north law and i don't know if little rock Changed the rule, a law, or something. But I do know that they do group uh, uh, yeah. testing. They they don't they haven't followed the rule of three uh, in new hires for a long time. They and again I don't know yeah. how they do this, but they actually have a strong preferential for uh, certified law enforcement.
and they actually have abbreviated um, classes uh, of recruit schools for people that, uh, that, that are certified law enforcement. And they will do background checks on 40, 50 people at a time. So, uh, and, and the only way they're doing those background checks is to get a list of 40 or 50 people. So, I'm not real sure how they do it, but I can assure you they don't, they don't adhere to any rule of three. Well, and, and so there's just so many of them, and like yeah. they have yeah. recruit schools with all yeah. of them, just mm -hmm. one law enforcement. So they're getting around it somehow, but I don't right. know. That. And I don't, I, I th and earlier this week I think we talked about it, um, you know, the the, el the list is, we define it as a list of eligible candidates. Well, if someone doesn't pass a background check, I don't, they're not eligible. So, um, you know, I if we can develop a mechanism whereby some of those background checks can be done on the front end, even if it's a group of however many, 10, 20, I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure what the number is, as long as they're not conveyed in a list format you know this these are number one through ten where you do the background checks on them but more of these are ten names you can do the background checks on them that that's gonna have in my mind that's a certainly a, a, a way to sort of weed out the list because if someone has a felony conviction they don't need to be number four on the list or number six on the list or tied for number three on the list um, and and that I think I don't have a problem with that um, the only one, and I, and I, you know, I've been a lawyer long enough to know that not everybody does what their rules say that they do. Um, <laughs> but the only one that sort of openly doesn't follow the rule of three is Conway, and and they very very openly say no. If we have a tie, we give them we give them the top three, and if there's a tie in any of those top three, we give them the top five or ten or however many it is. Again, I don't think I think that's probably a violation, but Mike Murphy, that's his problem to deal with and not mine. Director James. I think what we could do in that situation when we sort of looking at that process, we could take once the list is certified, we could take the top ten names and we can do a background to have a background check performed on those first ten names or eleven names or twelve names. And that information would only be conveyed back to HR, not to the chiefs. And if there's someone on that list that comes back that has a felony or something, we would scratch that person's name. Okay. And we just move it up. And we, we can do that. That's easy enough. And I think the system is in place with the police department to do background checks. So it's just a matter of us sending them the name alphabetized. And, and to me, that's an administrative decision, so I don't... And kind of a different see. subject in a way. I mean, it's, it might not solve our dilemma that we're trying to get out of. Right. Are we, uh, are we uh, and I'll make a motion, are we, uh, of course, again, we cannot vote this into a rule change into existence tonight. We can ask the city attorney to draft that and then vote on that in a public meeting next month. Uh, do I sense agreement that the lottery system on the in hire list <coughs> situation that it would be lottery system would be the way to break that tie? I agree. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion that uh, uh, we ask city attorney to draft uh, a rule change to make uh, on in hire testing uh, in the event of a tie on in hire testing that there would be a lottery used to break the tie. And she word that for us for a, a rule thing and uh, for the rule change, and then of course uh, Director James would see that that is uh, in any advertising for the position going forward, so that everybody knows that up front. So uh, that is the motion that in the event of a tie on the entire testing, a lottery system would be used to break the tie. Actually, the motion is that we direct City Attorney to draft that for us. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. Sure. Motion to second. Discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. So, Madam City Attorney, if you would just draft that for us and bring it back next month. And then, Director James, if you make sure we meet the qualifications of a public hearing, we will uh, do that as such next month. So, all right. So, we've kind of come full circle on, on that discussion, I think, at, at this time. Oh. Uh, New business. We had nothing uh, uh, on the agenda. New business. I'll now open the floor uh, one more time for any additional comments on any item we have discussed. Any item on the agenda, not on the agenda. Uh, 
anyone. Uh, yep, just punch your punch your red button there. Just so we get you trained right. <laughs> Commissioner Scott. All right. Um this really doesn't have anything to do with anything you said. I've been reading through the book. I have a few questions about some of the content of the book, and I was wondering what the appropriate way would be for me to get my questions answered. They're probably very trivial, and I don't want to waste everybody's time with them. So if you've been here, I yeah. don't need to retread this. Yeah. I think what we can do, if, if uh, I think we can just answer those after the meeting. I don't have any. Sure, or if, you, or if it's problem. easier for you to just put them in an email format. Yeah. And if you want to, I mean, I can I can try to reply that way and that yeah. way. Yours, yours is, you know, like, Okay. We'll just hold for a minute afterwards. I don't think we violate anything there just by answering. Well, uh, as long questions. as um, as long as there's not any discussion on anything that'll come back before the commission. I promise I won't discuss that. Uh, okay. Yes, <laughs> well, basically, just your. Uh, why don't you go with the email to Janine? I think that's the best way. And, and I, you know, that I'm way we that way we've got a record of it, and oh, it's okay. That way we have a record of it, and and if there is something that's sort of un un, there may be some, you may locate something that no one else is located, which does need to be discussed for the full commission. That'll give us the opportunity to raise it. That's satisfactory. Yeah, that okay. one's fine. All right, all right. Again, open the floor. Anything? Any further discussion, commissioners, chiefs, firefighters, Mr. Mayor, Director James, I'm City Attorney. Yes, sir. All right, uh, why don't we give Commissioner Scott the honor of making a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. Uh, all in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed say no. The meeting is adjourned.